Vipinisai. It is seen after abiding the nature again backfires with full force, demanding again too much involvement and overtakes. Can it be considered as ignorance sleep seeping in? Yes. So, very good question there. Just like I said, we can continue the discussion that nature overpowers this individual. There is no individual, there is no will, but we can forget about these things because totally practical issues here. So, the nature will put put you to sleep. That is, that is what you are calling is backfire. And the stronger the desires are, the pending desires, if they are very strong, the sleep will be more frequent and will be deeper. And once this, all this is settled, when the dust is settled, you wake up again. Oh, what happened there? I, f- I forgot to be in knowledge. Now my guru is going to be very angry. I wasted my two years and so on. But by the time nature has done her job, whatever was pending. So to avoid this kind of extremes, what do we do? I mean, I've told this many, many times. Fulfill your desires. Think that they are my desires and fulfill. Fully knowing they are not mine and I don't have any control over the fruits of these desires. So it will not backfire that much. It is like a steam engine, you see. Or you can say pressure cooker. If you let out the steam time to time, it is not going to cause uh, explosion of ignorance. There will be ups and downs, which is very, very normal. We have no, we, we, we are not that stubborn that you know, I want awareness 24 by 7 non-stop. Otherwise, I'll do something bad to the nature. No, it's not possible. That is ignorance again. It settles down on its own. On the one hand, you have the body-mind full of desires. On the other hand, you have the experiencer, neutral, peaceful, blissful, has nothing. Now, extreme is, is to be avoided. Both should happen with tiny amount of, you know, the pressure builds up, you neutralize it somehow. And the mother nature will let you kindly to remain in awareness, isn't it? We have this delusion, this creature has this delusion that I can command awareness. No, it comes automatically (laughs) and it goes automatically. The abiding, even that is not in our hands. Our means, this illusory individual does not do anything. So, that should be understood. And then you remain peaceful instead of, you know, waging a war with the nature. It's not possible to win, actually. So, always an agreement. I have told this many times, isn't it? That if you find desire there, it not it is not to be suppressed because there is nobody to suppress, first of all. And if the intellect has some kind of distortion, it will try to suppress and then you know what happens. Especially if the means are provided, it must be fulfilled. That means its time has come. It was destined to happen. And then the fruits must be taken. That also being in a pose of surrender. At least you have little bit of control over the actions and desires, but you don't have any control over the fruits. And that should be a major question instead of what should I do when the abiding stops automatically? How can I stop the ignorance from coming back? These questions are childish. The big question is, can I avoid the fruit of my actions when this happens? And the answer is no. They also must be surrendered. It is, they are not my fruits, you see. This abidance should be there at that time also. Because nature will do its thing, you see. Ultimately, it wins. And if you forget to be in awareness when the fruits are coming, that is very bad. There, nature is not saying that you don't abide. There, the nature is not clouding your vision now. So, you have full freedom to observe the fruits, knowing fully that they are not mine. And the actions that happened in darkness were also not mine. You see, the awareness is independent of time. You can clear that accumulation that happened in darkness in the time of light. It's possible. This is called repenting in <laughs> some of the traditions. Repent. Oh, it was an error and so on. But uh, we don't call it like this. We say forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Because it is not you who is doing it. Shama bhav, sakshi bhav. They should be together. So, if you fail to be in awareness at the time of action, at least you should be aware during the time of fruits. So, it is not the actions that are painful. It is the fruit. It is not the action that binds you. It is the fruit that binds you. Especially if it is positive. The bondage is complete, perfect. If it is negative, there will be a reason to detach. But if it is positive, you are gone. 
like a fly on the fly trap it is sweet some kind of sticky sugary thing <laughs> the fly wants it but it's trapped so the suffering is a blessing in disguise it frees us but the happiness traps us so all these fruits should be seen equally while being in awareness and they should should be seen as not mine and that brings the equanimity automatically as long as you consider the fr- fruits as yours action is not mine i am not responsible but the fruit is mine <laughs> so that is a big problem then that means the ag- ignorance has not really gone you are still in the night time the day has not started for you so we should avoid the extremes so that the fruits are not extreme that much can be done you see any intelligent person will do that it is like if you are very hungry you overeat and then that is not pleasant and the the hunger extreme hunger was also painful and this overeating that happened also painful to avoid these things what do we do keep eating little bit bite by bite mohan is asking i see that most of my actions are driven by desires want for something i have noticed that without desire i mostly end up in inaction can there be any action without desire no there cannot be any action without desire you see desire is the motivating force in the universe it is also called the will will of the universe so whatever whatever you are thinking is my actions not your actions and whatever you are thinking is my desires it's not your desire so if they if they are not there no action will happen it's perfectly okay it's not our problem then if there is a desire action will happen not my my problem is not mine witness it witness the action and witness the inaction because both are impermanent they do not last and many people will say inaction is also action because you have decided to not do anything there the desire is don't do any of your usual things sit quietly is the desire you see the desire cannot be avoided there is never a time when there is no desire it's never a time you must be thinking today i have done a lot of work lot of action now it's time to relax and sleep for 8 hours you know that is the desire then the desire is to sleep and relax and that is what will happen that is the action whatever you are thinking as procrastination is simply a resistance to whatever impression as are stored in the mind you know there is internal fight there the impressions are telling you to not do anything and probably there is a fear that i'll fail if i don't do anything or there will be bad time ahead if i don't do anything and so on or the intel intelligence it is fighting back so and then there is not anything to do with desire or action that is a sign of darkness in you that is a sign of total ignorance somebody with knowledge is pretty much certain of what to do <laughs> if he wants in action there will be in action which is already in action isn't it but he will never twist it to mean as procrastination that means that a uh, distortion has happened in the mind that that means there is a internal tangle there because a person in the knowledge is very happy when there is nothing to do very happy and if there is work to do he is very happy that finally it will get done there is desire now so the one in the bliss will find the bliss in everything and the one in ignorance has nothing but suffering he will is going to suffer the action he is going to suffer the inaction that is guaranteed 